Hello and welcome back to my exciting series on keypad integration and decoding. In the last three videos we used the uh, 74C922 4x4 matrix keypad decoder to do pretty much all the work of decoding the keypad for us. And we, the first video we sent everything out to uh, a couple of uh, LEDs here along with this fifth LED for to display the data available. So we had output A, B, C, and D go into LEDs and it would count sequentially as you pressed the buttons which obviously didn't correspond to the actual numbers on the buttons it just counts from 0 to uh, 15 or 16 or F, 0 to F. Uh, so that was a good start. So then we wanted to produce something on a seven segment display so we tried the 7447 which is a common anode seven segment display driver and we hooked that up to our 74C922 and we were able to get you know uh, our seven segment display to display numbers. The problem with this one was that again it only counts sequentially from zero to nine. It doesn't display the hexadecimal characters A through F, so that wasn't going to work for us either. So then we moved up to something a little bit stronger, or which is a basically a ROM chip, which was the uh, 28C16. And uh, what we were able to do with that is insert these codes. We had to burn these codes onto the ROM so that when these addresses were addre you know, accessed, it would display a number, a seven segment code that we were able to find using the table. And it would, when you got uh, a one, it would display the correct character up there. And we, put, we were able to put these in order, so when you press the key, number one, you would get the seven segment display, number one. And then when you got to A, it would display the A. So that worked out pretty good for us, but what, and again, we were still using, you know, the uh, 74C922 to drive it, but what if we have a keypad that's bigger than a 4x4? like a 5 by 4 or something else. We're no longer going to be able to use this uh, 74C922, so we need to look for something even a little bit more powerful than this. Uh, a ROM, can, you can only read information inside a ROM. It, it's not programmable. You can't, you know, execute a program or do anything like that. It can only read, you know, the data out. So we're going to move on in this video to the AT89C51, which is a microcontroller. It has just about everything in it. It has an 8-bit, it's basically an 8-bit CPU with 4K ROM and 128 bytes of RAM. And it's a basically an I.O. chip with, you know, four ports. You've got port 0, 0 through 7, port two here or port one here port two here and port three here so there's a lot we can do with this chip without having any other chips on board if you were building a real computer you would have a separate processor you would have a separate rom chip you would have a separate ram chip and you would have a separate io chip like this or pia uh, peripheral input output chip so we're going to start using this AT89C51 and what we're going to have to do is learn how to scan these these keys so that we can display our output. Scanning requires that we first we're going to set all of these these rows and these columns to a logic 1. And what we'll do is one at a time we'll like turn each row this first row to a logic zero and we'll, we'll be scanning to see if any one of these keys is pressed. If a key is pressed like this number one then row one will go low and we'll automatically displace you know the uh, one on our L 
seven segment display here. Or if we, you know, put in the, the old code, it would just go zero through F again. But we're going to go ahead and just put in the correct code to begin with. So if you pressed, if this was a zero and we're scanning this row and you press this number one, then uh, column one would go low and we would automatically display the number one because column one and column row one and column one are both low so then we would know that the one was pressed but we're going to have to actually do some programming now uh, i prefer assembly language but you know eventually i'll show you the c language too and again i'm not a programmer so i will also give you references to where i learned how to program these things <laughs> So let's go take a quick look at our 89C51. Here's our 89C51. Let's quickly go over the pins here that we're going to be using. On the keypad, we're going to set up the rows on the uh, zero port over here, or no, on the one port over here. So row one is going to be connected to P10, P11, through P17, well, through P1. Uh, what is it? Three here, or yeah, three for the rows, and P4 through P7 for the columns. And again, like I said, we're going to scan by first turning all of these to ones, and we're going to go one at a time. We're going to set this to a zero and see if any one of these keys is pressed. Then we'll set this to a zero and see it, again if any of these columns you know, show a logic zero, then we would automatically display something, with the appropriate, you know, seven segment display for that key that was pressed. Again, with zero, set it to zero, set this to zero, and check all four columns again, and then just keep repeating it. That's, that's done in a millisecond. I mean, each one of these is done in a millisecond. So in 16 milliseconds, we've scanned the whole keypad and started back at the top doing it again. So anyhow, back to the keys. Okay, we have our rows and our columns set up here. Reset. You want that to be uh, turned off, but you know when you first start off, you might have to turn it high and then turn it. You know, put it back to ground. Uh, we have a crystal here on uh, what is that? Pin 18 and 19. I just use a 14 megahertz crystal and put it directly across these two. Then, of course, we have to ground pin 20, put BCC on uh, pin 40, and for our output, we're using uh, port 0, so port P0 through P7 will be connected to our 7-segment display. Now, as far as the control lines here, the only one you have to worry about is pin 31, which we're going to tie high, and uh, we really don't have to worry about this right now. But once you start multiplexing, you know, multiple seven segment displays, then you'll want to be able to control which one of these common pins is lit up at what time so that, you know, you can multiplex, go through each one of them, lighting them up one at a time and displaying the correct character on each of the seven segment displays that you might set up. But we're not not—we're only gonna use one right now, so we really don't have to worry about this. And let's go ahead and display the circuit here. Here's our circuit. We have our keypad and our rows are all hooked up here. Here's row one going to P10, just like we had it up here, P10. Then 2 going to P1, 1, P1, 2, P1, 3. And then our columns. The first column here is going to P1, 4, P1, 5, P1, 6, and P1, 7. And that's how our keyboard is all wired up to port P1 here. And our, our seven-segment display is, of course, wired up to P0. I start with uh, A here on P0.0. And B and C and D and E and F. And I don't ever worry about the decimal point here. So P07 isn't hooked up into anything. There's that uh, P20 that goes into uh, 
our common connection here. We're not really going to wire this up. We're just going to wire this to a uh, VCC since I'm using common anode. Here's our crystal here on uh, pin 18 and 19. Reset. It's tied low. And uh, the uh, enable is on pin 31 will be tied high. That's the only, you know, uh, control signal we have to, you know, worry about is tying that one high. Okay. And uh, I don't want to show you this. This is the actual code that we're going to be putting in there. I'm going to be using the assembly code. We also have C code here. But let's go to coding. Okay, here's our code. Uh, I'll try to walk through it. I'm not an uh, expert at coding. I do understand assembly language a little bit. And so I'll try to do my best to explain everything here. I did make some changes to the original code. But let's walk through everything. ORG00 just means your program is going to start at zero in your ROM. Uh, move data pointer to seg data. Seg data is a label that we have at the bottom that displays our uh, seven segment display code. 79 is for a 1, 24 is for a 2, a 3, an A, a 4, 5, 6, and on through, which matches our actual keypad. Uh, move FF into A. I don't see any purpose of this at all, so I could be wrong, but at this point I don't see any purpose for it. Uh, move 00 into P0. That just means that our uh, P0 port is going to be used for output to our seven segment display. Now the set B P20, we're not going to really worry about that. That's uh, just, uh, that's going to be used eventually if we ever start multiplexing seven segment displays. And we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to tie our uh, common anode, common port to VCC through a resistor for the one seven segment display that we're going to be using during this uh, tutorial. So let's get down into the actual code. This is the very beginning, and I call this R1C1 because it's row one, uh, column one that's going to be scanned, but we have to set things up first for that row to be scanned. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put FF into P1, which is going to set all of P1, all seven bits of P1 to a logic high. And then we're just going to clear the very first one, P10, which is the first row. And then we're going to start scanning all four columns. So the first one, we're going to sk first scan PL4, which is the first column, and if that's a zero, we're going to move uh, a zero, zero into A and call our uh, display program, the label display, down here. And in display, what you're going to do is you're going to add A to the uh, display pointer, which is this right down here, and a zero means you're just going to use the very first uh, seven segment code that comes up and you're going to take that and put it right into the output port so that one is going to be displayed on your seven segment display immediately. And we can go back up here, but if you didn't press, if you didn't press the, uh, the one key, you would jump here to R1C2 and start scanning column two. And again, if column two is a zero, that means it was pressed, we'll move a zero one, so we're pointing to the next display pointer, and then call the display, and the number two would be uh, shown on our on output on P0 and go to our seven segment display. And the same for three, we'll set, you know, uh, we're still doing row one, and we'll just, uh, if it is pushed, we'll look at uh, the third digit in our uh, seven segment data and display that. And the fourth, the same thing. If the fourth uh, key is pressed in row one, we'll look for the uh, fourth digit in our uh, data pointer which is seven seg data or seg, seg data and display the number four out there. 
or in our case, actually, this would be A. We'd be displaying an A. It's number four here is zero, one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three, and then A. Yeah. So we would display this A. Now we're ready for another uh, uh, completely different row. We're ready to start scanning row two. Now this is where you set P1, which is our first row, back to a logic high, and you clear P1.1. So now you're just going to be scanning row two, and starting with obviously column one. So again, you check PL.4 point, point to see if that's a low, and if it is, you go to the uh, fourth character in our uh, data pointer, and you'll display the uh, number four there. And, but if it isn't pressed, you go on down to R2C2, row two, column two, which is where we have a five, and it just happens to correlate with this. And if PL5 is a zero, we would display the fifth character in our uh, display pointer. But if it's not, you go to row two, C2, and you do the same thing. And that would be actually number six. And then when you get, and it, again, you would display the sixth character in the display pointer. If not, you go down here to R2C4, and that's PL7. And if it is a zero, you're going to move 07 or the seventh pointer, which is actually the code for a B, into our display. And P0 would display the uh, letter B on the seven segment display. Then we start another row. Again, you have to take PL or P1.1 and set it back high and clear P1.02 to start scanning the third row. And this is just repeats itself over and over until you get to the very end of it. And if none of the keys were pressed, you're going to jump right back up to R1C1, way up here at the top, and start scanning again. Now this scan process only takes like one microsop one microsecond per key or per uh, row and column. So in 16 microseconds, you're scanning through this real quickly and everything gets displayed. So hopefully you were able to follow that. If not, you know, I'll include the uh, link to where I was able to get this code and, you know, look through it. Okay, once you've gone through all of your code and you think you have it all correct, don't forget the end down here. Uh, you can right click here on target and go to options for target. And uh, for the crystal, I have 11.0592 because that's what everybody else was using, even though I have a 14 meg crystal. And it's you want to go here and look at output and make sure you create a hex file. So make sure you check that right there and then say OK and then you're ready to build. And the build down here will tell you if you have any errors and pretty much send you right to them. If you click on it, it'll send you right to the uh, error so that you can correct it. We don't have any errors, so uh, let's go ahead and program this onto a chip there for our hex file which is where under documents program one object and let's see here today is the ninth and here is our hex file okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to want to burn that to our chip so we go here Load that file. Let's see, the hex file is right here. Oop, can't stop. Let's first put a chip in the burner. And I like to read the chip first. I selected the AT89C51 here. I'm going to read it. It's a nice clean chip. Everything's F. Then I'm going to load that file. Where's my hex file? 
It's an Intel hex file. Say OK. There's our code, and then we're ready to program it. And program. And it's all done. Of course, I like to read it again. Read. Looks good. OK. Now we're ready just to wire everything up. So let's go back here to my Excel file. And look at the wiring. Because this is the way we're going to wire everything up here. Now you might have noticed I'm still using the 4x4 keypad, and that is for simplicity. Because uh, my 4x5, uh, uh, the pins don't line up real easily. Like on the 4x4, you have column 1 through column 4, and row 1 through row 4. The uh, 4x5, the pins are really, <laughs> it's kind of brutal. So I'm going to keep it simple for everybody. So let's just start wiring this up. Uh, we're going to start with pin 1 up here, which goes to P10. And that's our row. So our rows are, are always in blue. And row 1 is number one, two, three, four here. And that goes to P1. Then we got row two. This goes to P2 here, or right. pin two. Row three goes to pin three. Row four goes to pin four. And then we start with our columns. With column one here. One to pin five. Column two. Pin six. Column three. Column four. Getting tight in there. So we got our keypad all wired up now. And uh, there's our, obviously, our AT89C51. I've already got the ground pin and the positive voltage on pin 40. And I also have pin 31 tied high. Uh, the next pin, pin number 9, is our uh, reset button. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here and tie that low. And we'll need our crystal on pin 19 and 20. And then our ground, or 18 and 19, and the ground is on 20. And then we're just ready to wire up the uh, seven segment display to uh, port 0, point 0.0 through point 0.7. Well, let's go ahead and do that. I'll turn this around, make this a little easier. Now we got, what is that? Pin 39 is 0, way up here. So we're going to tie that to our A on the seven segment display. And 38, let's go into B. And you can see I already have the common pin here uh, through a resistor going to VCC because this is a common anode seven segment display. Okay, so we have A and B, let's go now to C. Which is down here. And then D. Which is over here. Yeah. Let's try not to mess up everything here. Mm -hmm. 
A. Right there. And F. Which is right over here. I'll scoot that under. And finally, G. That should be everything there that we need. Now, as long as all of our lines are correct, we may be able to get this to work. There you go. One, two, three, A, four, five, six, B, seven, eight, nine, C, D, or E, zero, F, and then D. There we go. That worked out perfectly the first time. Wow. <laughs> I'm surprised. Uh, again, that's uh, using the AT. 89C51, which is basically an ADC51 Intel chip, which is a microcontroller. And the main reason we use that is because it has everything that we need. It's like a whole computer on a chip. As you can see, it has an 8-bit CPU, it has 4K of ROM, and 128 bytes of RAM, and it has four PIA ports, 8-bit ports, and 32 I.O. pins, so it can do everything. It's like having a whole computer on a single chip. Now, it can't do a lot because it only has 128 bytes of RAM, and it's not a real powerful 8-bit CPU, but it allows us to execute a program, store the program, execute the program, use the little bit of memory in there for a page file, and with all these output ports, we can drive a seven segment display or an LCD display. It's a, a great chip to learn on. Okay, I think uh, we covered just about everything there really quickly. So thanks for watching. Uh, the next uh, video, let's see. I'm going to start trying to work on getting a second seven segment display running and probably an LCD display running. So stay tuned. And thanks for watching.